here we are at episode 125 and we're starting number 20 and uh, just noticing my manual here is starting to get dog-eared already anyway we gotta look for uh, parts number L19 and L20 looks like there's three of L20 and we have to make three of these units so I guess we need nine of these and three of these but before we do that you'll remember in the last episode we started using double-sided tape to hold parts down and I was wondering does it leave a residue well this has been stuck down there pretty hard for a while I'm just gonna take it off now and I'm gonna take a look at this side here under the microscope You'll have to take my word for it. I can't show it to you. But I can see on here where it was. Well, yes, there was. In fact, you might be able to see it with the macro lens. Um, sort of like a little jelly-like substance right on the... Yeah, that's from the tape. Yep, it's too bad. So that means I guess I gotta check the parts. Now mind you, I did press this down real hard for quite a while. So, um, well, them's the brakes. This does not mean that I'm going to stop using this tape. It just means that I'm going to stop using it on glass. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of residue stuck on there. It does not peel off well. Now, that's this particular brand of tape. Now, just in case somebody might be interested, that tape was this one right here. Residue free, it says. It looks like L's 19 and 20 are just right together here. I'm using my old nipper, or my homemade one rather. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Okay, now find two more sprues and we got them all. Well, clearly, these are life rafts. And uh, got them all trimmed. Even took the time to remove the flashing from all the way around the outside, which was actually quite easy on these because they were square. And these little boxes, you see, these little pegs on the bottom there, I guess they're supposed to fit somewhere on the ship. And then, I guess the idea is you're supposed to put one in and then stack two more on top of it and uh, yeah it was kind of puzzling though why would they have life rafts? wasn't the Bismarck unsinkable? now you will notice here that these little boxes that I have to put the uh, life rafts in they don't want to stay flat too easily knocked over so if you go back to episode 46 if you want to be bothered that is that's when uh, Tony's model came and this is a piece of plastic from that model and uh, the idea is that I punch the holes in the right place so that I should be able to just fit this on there and and it'll stay nice and flat then when I drop in the life rafts I should be able to sort of pile them up and they're not going to fall over yeah I think that's the way it's supposed to go according to the instructions here alright we got it taped down so it's not going to slide around 
and you'll notice that these are uh, flat on the bottom. So the first one, I'll just put a little tiny drop of solvent right there, and I'll, then I'll just put it in place. Let's do a dry run here. And then position it so it's basically square in the box. Something like that. Then I'll wait a little bit, put a little bit of CA glue on the, I guess the top here, and uh, place the next one on, and so on and so on. I think it's going to go okay. Now we don't need very much. Okay. That's square enough. Maybe a little bit to my left. Yeah. I'm going to get another one in position here so I can grab it. Ah! Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to make a jump. There. I think that's okay. Okay, one more here. You know, it's funny. I wonder why they would... Uh, go to all the trouble to have the all three of them, or actually all, all nine of them, so detailed when you're only going to be seeing the top one and the sides of the rest. But I guess... Okay. Does that look okay to you? Okay. Just let that evaporate and should be good to go. Doesn't take very much to make the plastic sticky. Well, you know what? I'm the real Bismarck. I don't think the life wraps were perfectly placed either, so. Yeah. I gotta remember this idea. It worked pretty good. Thanks again, Tony. Now I know I had said that I wasn't going to use glass anymore with this double-sided tape. Um, where's the end of it? Anyway, uh, I've kind of changed my mind on that. I have hundreds of these things. Literally hundreds. Okay, I don't mind if I have to throw this out. slide around now. Okay, I'm going to be wanting to handle this carefully because there is a lot of really delicate stuff that I could accidentally damage even with my fingers here. But anyway, let's have a little bit of fun here. You know what? I've got to be careful I don't break the glass underneath there. I should be using um, Billy's plexiglass. Here's another thought. Will this stuff cut with scissors? OK, 
Okay, now maybe we can do the thinner one here. I think I'm going to get the plexiglass. You know, cutting it with scissors is not a good idea. Look at how it uh, twisted this plate here. You know, I never measured this. I wonder how thick it is. Can you read it upside down? Well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says seven thousandths of an inch. There we go. Yeah, seven thousandths of an inch. So that means it's only half as thick as my little smallest drill bit is in diameter. Okay. Okay, I'm going to be wanting these two little pieces that have the fives on them. Now if this pings off, I hope I can see where it goes. You know, that's harder than I thought it was would be to cut. I guess I'll just... Maybe I should be using my specialty one. I can sort of position the... There we go. Now I'll do the other one. Just need just a little piece here. You know, that photo edge stuff is pretty hard metal. You wouldn't think it, especially when you realize how it's formed. It's sort of like additive manufacturing, which is quite an interest, interesting concept. Now I have to quickly correct myself here. I was thinking about this afterwards, and this is not done by additive manufacturing. A 3D printer is additive manufacturing. This is still done the old-fashioned way. In other words, you take a sheet of metal or something and remove what you don't want, and what you want is left. And I think that's how these photo etch sheets are made. Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a chemical involved and, uh, and so on. And yes, there is, it is sort of a photo, uh, they do, you, they do take it from a photograph, like a negative. Um, yeah, it's sort of like the old, the, the way the old, uh, offset printing sheets were made or plates were made. It's, I think it's like that, only I'm not a hundred percent sure and I haven't, uh, gone into it, but it's not additive manufacturing. Sorry about that. I'll have to take this in two bites. Now I don't want to lose this. There we go. Sort of. Okay, we're back to our double-sided sticky tape. I don't think I need to push that down there very hard. At least it won't move around now when I try to uh, stick something to it. Okay, we already know that CA glue will stick to photo etch. But the experiment here is how well and what will happen to extra thin. Now this extra thin has become contaminated because I've used it several times. Um, every time I wipe the applicator on a piece of plastic it sort of dissolves the plastic and some of it wicks its way back up into the applicator. Then I put the applicator back in the bottle and slowly the uh, you know it will become contaminated very very slightly but you know. Now what's going to happen with that uh, little dab, if it's going to evaporate and the experiment will be how much of it uh, will we be able to see after it's evaporated. Now on this side here, 
we'll do it again and we'll take one of our little pieces here just going to reposition I dropped it in the wrong place okay just put it right there okay now will it glue photo etch to photo etch now experiment number three we'll get lots here so it'll have plenty of time to to dissolve the plastic it's already starting to stick It's already starting to stick. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to leave that for 24 hours. And in episode number 126, we'll just see what we've got. Now, if I was to take this little piece of plastic and go around with it, you would see it mixing. It's the, the molten, molten, I mean the liquid, liquefied plastic in with the, uh, in with the extra thin. And it would actually, you know, make it sort of cloudy. But we'll just leave it like that. Okay, now this one already is almost completely evaporated. At least from my perspective. You might be able to see it better. Meanwhile here, back to step 20. So, we did the life rafts. And uh, we are now at the radar unit. It's called radar unit number one. You know, I did not know that the Bismarck had radar until I started this project. I thought that radar had come along after that on ships. I thought it was only a land-based thing. I thought it was so big and cumbersome that it could never be used on a ship. But I guess they had uh, miniaturized it enough that it sort of worked. And uh, anyway, so we got to make the two here. And they are the K-Sprue. And look at the size of these things. Isn't it nice to be working with something that I don't have to use the ma macro lens on? Okay, so this is the base and this is the top. All right, K10. And K11. I want to be careful here. I can always uh, trim it with the uh, Tamiya cutters later. Uh, there's also a couple of small pieces here, K20 and 19. Or I guess 19 and 20 if you want to see it in order. Okay, these little guys are a lot smaller. Here's 19, here's 20. And uh, maybe I will use the Tamiya Clipper and I'll just take it right up against the sprue. And then I'll trim the excess off the bottom of the part later. But once again, you know what, fellas and gals? I think we're going to have to leave it for tomorrow. In the meantime, thanks for watching. And uh, all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll do something with these little parts. <laughs>